Shabro, Father James with Father Hank Lyon. Hey. We are on Zoom right now, so Father Hank might seem a little differently, like he's I got a robot. <laughs> he's on the other side of the moon. But speaking of on the other side of the moon, uh, we want to talk about that's a Pink Floyd reference. Um, music, uh, <laughs> but not Pink Floyd songs. Uh, church songs, church hymns. Music that we hear at church, especially uh, COVID, we're not really supposed to be singing. Uh, do you guys sing at St. Emily's? Uh, technically, no, we don't sing at it. Halle, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> you don't sing? No. Uh, um, there's, there's like an entrance, but there's no congre- congressional singing, congregational singing. Congressional singing, as Congress- in the House of Representatives. <laughs> You're still election oriented. Uh, congregational singing, correct. Yeah, the COVID regulation. Sorry, it's the end of the day, Father Hank. I know you're tired. Um, <laughs> it's, I, uh, so um, yeah, COVID precautions don't really permit congregational singing because you're going to breathe droplets of death into people, and so we have to just listen. And before we go any further, I want to give a shout out to my music director, nice. Glenn DeCastro, who is uh, just about awesome, and you you know. Mr. DeCastro, Father Hank, you had you were here at St. Juliana with him. He's great. So uh, he does awesome music. And uh, so these songs that um, maybe we might critique or make fun of are are no sign about uh, our music at St. Juliana or or Glenn. But any initial thoughts on on music, Father Hank, what you like to hear in in church before I I go off into my... uh, (laughs) You're tired. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think for the first, you know, few months of COVID and, and no singing, I didn't really mind it. There was something kind of nice about sacred silence in the mass. But recently, with you know, at some of our masses, we have an entrance hymn being sung by the cantor, cantor only, and it just it just adds something. It really does kind of call and, and kind of touch the heart at another level that I think makes music you know, just so key to the Mass. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. I think it was Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, Pope Emeritus, um, who talked about the the liturgy being countercultural. And our culture is not very good with with silence, for one, but also kind of appropriate and uh, centering sol- uh, solemnity kind of music, a music that enters into the depths of your soul and, and soothes you and eases you in a way. Um, we don't get that in the culture, uh, so we should be able to get that in the mass. Uh, I don't know, that just kind of came to mind when you, when you talked about the silence part. I, you know, the rectory right here on Tui, as you well remember, um, there's, a, there's a stoplight there, so cars will often stop. It's literally right outside the rectory door. The walls are thin to begin with. And when they're blasting music, you get to hear <laughs> through, you know, when you're 5 a.m. or all all hours of the day, just people blasting just random, random songs. And it's just jarring. Um, something about receiving music at Mass should not be that way, wouldn't you say? Yeah, there should be something, I think, in a quality way different than most of the music I would listen to just so it because music depending on its mood automatically has a greater effect of putting you into that mindset or like a centering of yourself recollecting yourself in a soul like think of soundtrack in a movie if you were to watch the movie like a serious scene without music it'd be kind of awkward but the music brings you right into that emotion right Ooh. into what very, yeah, that's a good good image. Speaking of soundtracks, I the best bridal music I had. A bride walked into the theme from Jurassic Park. No, yeah, which was awesome. I mean, definitely not sacred music, but I was like, I'm going to allow that one because it's <laughs> the theme to Jurassic Park, and she walked in on it, and it was awesome. But anyways, yeah, <clears throat> the music does. We're supposed to experience something of the sublime or the transcendent at mass and so uh music that is solemn in a way that that heightens us and and kind of directs our hearts and our minds upward to god um it might be more fitting than the the folksy you know me strumming on my on my guitar 
um, that doesn't lift your mind to God. It lifts your mind to the depths of hell <laughs> <laughs> when you listen to me. Um, so, but yeah, I, you know, there's also, um, something about that folks. I just funny as I'm thinking about the guitar that I've been playing now. Um, gosh, when did I, when did I start that in May? Like, yeah, like mid lockdown. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to, you know, not, I'm not going to lie. I'm, uh, I'm pretty good. <laughs> not really. I mean, but what's, what's crazy about the guitar is I've, I've learned a ton of songs and I can play them pretty well, all like rock and, and folk songs, right? They're easy. You just, you get a couple chords down and you know it. And you know the, I know the lyrics just from growing up listening to these songs. It's easy to play like, you know, a G chord, a C chord, a D chord, and, you know, and you've got like 25 songs down. But there's something about church music that I guess shouldn't be easy, that should take more effort. You know, the fact that I mastered guitar, or not mastered, but I've learned guitar pretty well in like a month with, with church music and chanting, I mean, didn't you have to take a class on chant in the seminary? Like, it shouldn't just be like, oh, this is super easy. I'm just going to pick it up and start, you know, I got it. But, like, no, I need to take time and effort, practice, intentionality. I remember when you were practicing the Exalted at Easter, right? Oh, took a long time. Yeah. I mean, chanting, right? Didn't you take some sort of uh, chant class or whatever? I did. I took about three semesters worth of chant. But it, yeah, it was a whole style of singing versus just you know picking up karaoke kind of thing. I mean, you really have to not only kind of tune your ear, but how you form the vowel sounds. There's just this whole more of a holistic approach to it, like sculpting versus I don't know, doodling kind of thing. Yeah. Ooh, good good images. You got the Car- Father Hank's karaoke hour. <laughs> this is chanting the mass. That's great. So one song, uh, our buddy, uh, he we were hanging out one night, and he mentioned this song that he doesn't like, and I was like, oh yeah, that's true, that's a good point. Uh, Father Connor Danstrom, who has his own podcast, um, far more accomplished podcast than ours, but he talked about this song, "Go Make a Difference." Do you know this song, Father Hank? It's a classic amongst, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go make a difference. I feel like we sung that after. Um, every school mass go make a difference you can make a difference go I make a difference <laughs> <laughs> no it's this thing is going to go on forever <laughs> go make a difference in the world yeah um, so do you remember were you part of that conversation with Father Connor um, I remember bits of it yeah yeah but it was great because it's like okay go make a difference is that really the point of our faith like Go make a difference. That's not really what we're called to do. Making a difference isn't necessarily a good thing. I can throw a brick. I can throw a brick through a window, you know, and say like, "All right, I made a difference," but that didn't really do anything good. You know what I'm saying? It's a terrible difference. Yeah, I mean, how about go like pray, go make a disciple, uh, go yeah, be, go be a saint, not just go make a difference. What I mean. And who? What's difference, right and wrong? It's literally like relative, secular, blah, blah blah. I don't know. What do you think? Sure. Yeah, and I think it kind of picks up on the difference. Like people walk away from hearing that song at church, going, "Eh, okay, like we sung along, nice." But consider some of the, the movies that really captivate our hearts and emotions. I mean, I mean, getting back into that complexity of the music to kind of give a voice, even without words, to the complexity of what we're going through, of what we experience. And if you have a complexity of music like that in mass, then you can tap into that and offer that to God. Mm. And there's a sense of understanding. Yeah, yeah. I. So we can go on, but we're, we're kind of out of time, and that's probably a good thing because I don't want to start reeling off hymns that people love. Like, oh, that was my all-time favorite, and you just completely, oh, you know... <laughs> trashed it um but anyways uh we do need to sing i forget i think it was Pius the 11th said like nothing can replace the human voice and augustine obviously said you know singing is praying twice um but singing in a way that is is genuine prayer where our hearts are open to the holy spirit we are united to god and hopefully that can be done at the mass with some good 
some good hymns, maybe some good chanting even. Sound good? Uh, God bless. Peace.